Well, this fall, one of the things you'll need to be doing on your farm is taking some soil samples, but the information on your soil sample is not the same from one company to the next. And when you say, I just need a soil sample, well, you have to tell the lab what you want. Now, one of the important things that many guys leave off is the cation exchange capacity. We wanted to discuss that today. Well, cation exchange capacity is super important. And if you don't know what it is in every single field you farm, I hate to say this, but I'm gonna have to scold you a little bit. You have to know it. Here's the reason why. With cation exchange capacity, it will tell you roughly how much nitrogen your soil can hold. So if you don't know this, just write it down. Just take 10 times your CEC, 10 times your cation exchange capacity. So if like, for example, in this field, if we had a cation exchange capacity of 15, 15 times 10 means we can hold about 150 pounds. If let's say there's already 20 pounds of nitrogen in the soil, that means we can apply 130 pounds. But Darren, we wanna go for 200 bushel corn. So I'm gonna put 200 pounds of nitrogen out. Can I do it? Well, eventually, yeah, over several applications. <laughs> That's what I've had to do. I've got a field that I call the blank slate where I've got a cation exchange capacity as low as 12 and a half. Well, this year I'm gonna have 170 bushel corn, I hope, or maybe even more. And to put on enough nitrogen to feed that crop, I've got to do it in multiple applications because I can only hold about 120 or 130 pounds each time. So I'm putting out a little bit in a side dress. I'm putting some out at planting time. I'm just being very cautious. And you know, in those lower cation exchange capacity soils, you don't want to do fall application. You want to try and do it all in the spring and as your crop is going to use it. Because if you've got a light soil, there just isn't enough holding capacity to keep that nitrogen safe and protected. So that's why you have to change your practices up based on that cation exchange capacity from field to field. We've got some heavy ground. Hey, you know what? It's fine. We could probably put the nitrogen out in the fall or put it all out in one shot in the spring. Either way, we'll be okay. So here's the reason why this is such a big deal. If you put on too much nitrogen, where does it go? Well, it's not gonna go anywhere if you don't have rain, but assuming that you have some rain, that nitrogen's probably gonna go down into the soil, meaning you lost it, you wasted money, number one, and number two, it's gonna end up in somebody's groundwater. When that happens, sooner or later, we're gonna end up as farmers with more regulations. And Darren and I were recently in Denmark where we went to a couple of farms and before they can apply any nitrogen, before they can apply any manure, before they can do anything in any field, they have to give a full report to the government. How would you like to farm that way? Well, that's the direction that we're headed down. If you don't know your cation exchange capacity, and if I don't know my cation exchange capacity, we're in trouble. And all I'm saying is we've got to, to some degree, regulate ourselves. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with a situation in the US like they have in Denmark, where the government is telling you how to farm. And that's not where we wanna head. So you may be saying, wait a minute now, I've got this lower cation exchange capacity, maybe a 15. I think I need to have that higher so I can put on a little more nitrogen in one shot or at least keep my nitrogen that I am applying a little safer. But what is cation exchange capacity and, and what makes up cation exchange capacity? Well, cation exchange capacity is the holding capacity of your soil. It's your soil's ability to hold nutrients, to hold water, even to tie up some chemicals that you may apply, soil residual type chemicals. So what that is made of, the cation exchange capacity, is the type of clay that you have in your soil and the amount of clay you have in your soil. And those two things you really can't influence without a big dirt mover switching the soil that's in your field. What you can change is the third component of cation exchange capacity, and that's your organic matter. So you can raise the organic matter levels in your soil by doing less tillage, raising higher residue crops, using cover crops. There's a number of practices that you can do on your farm to over time raise that organic matter. Now you can't change that you know, just overnight. It's not gonna go from a 2% to a 5% overnight. But over a long period of time, you can just keep doing that. Maybe you can raise it a quarter of a point a year. That could be a goal to say, I'm gonna do everything I can to try and start raising that. So, you know, over a period of time, you can raise it a point or two points or three points. We've done that on some fields in our farm and it's made a world of difference in crop production. Well, once again, cation exchange capacity is the holding capacity of your soil. You have to know that for every field on your farm because otherwise we're really concerned about more government regulations in this country. If we as farmers over apply our nitrogen. With soil testing, it's very important to do this not every year on every single field, but at least do some good soil testing on your farm and make sure you get your cation exchange capacity numbers. One other thing you want to pay attention to on your farm is weed control. We'll show you how to eliminate this tough weed coming up next.